Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Adam Ouellette. I've been an attorney for 20 years. I am the founder of Esquire Academy. More than that, I'm the author of Raising the Bar. It's a book for lawyers. And through my 20 years of law practice, I'm bringing you a lot of informational videos to teach you how I went from hating the law for many years to really loving the law. Is it a possibility? Of course it is. But first and foremost, I want to look at helping you create your life. And we're going to take a look at today life purpose. So I've done lots of transactional work, lots of real estate. I represented banks. I did condo law. I did a lot of litigation. I did a lot of contract litigation, business litigation, real estate litigation. Um, I did a lot of different types of law. And I am what I call a synthesizer, a distiller. I've taken information from all over the place, thousands of books I've read, and I've distilled it down to help you to figure out how to be in the law. And this is my mission, is to help you to figure out how you can love the law and help you build a life that you can really enjoy and have joy and passion about. A lot of us don't have that. So why do we choose the law? I want you to think back to before you even went to law school, when you were formulating the decision to go to law school, why did you want to go to law school? I want you to connect with that deeply. Why is that? Well, because... The reasons we went to law school can help guide us in how we make our lives as attorneys. We probably didn't give this a lot of thought. If you, even if you've been in practicing law for 30 plus years or two years, it doesn't matter. You can reconnect with that reason for going to law school and look at it, and it helps you to move towards what you want as a lawyer. There's a lot of reasons why we go to law school, and part of the reason is there's some undue influence, right? We learned that theory in law school, but a lot of us were unduly influenced by our parents saying, you know what, be a lawyer, be a doctor. Hey, I've been there. My parents said the same thing, be a lawyer, be a doctor. My sister became a chiropractor, doctor, and I became a lawyer. We listened, right? I, I looked back on it and said to myself, wow, uh, what would I choose to do over if I were to do it again? And I wouldn't probably do a lot of things over, but I wish I would have found the information I'm teaching you a lot earlier in my law career. So regardless, we're going to move forward and look at the common reasons for people going to law school. We want to help others. We do. We want to help other people. It's a big reason. It's a good profession to be in. I put a question mark here because it used to be a good profession to be in um, back in the day, but it's a lot harder now. And so the tools and tips I'm going to give you in these videos will help you to make it a good profession for yourself, because it is really all about your mindset, your belief systems, and we'll talk more about that in future videos. A lot of us went to law school because we could thought we thought we could make a really good living, and it's still possible. I made a really good living as a lawyer and didn't have to work all that hard after a while because I put things in motion that caused my law practice to run without me. That's how I was able to write a book and and develop Esquire Academy. All the while, uh, my businesses were continuing to operate. Some people go to law school because they want to have an ability to create change for good. They want to cause change for the greater good or for humanity. And that's a lofty goal, which a lot of us have. But in some instances, in many instances, it's difficult to make a living uh, creating change for good. But there's ways to do it. And we will talk about that in future videos as well. And we talked about maybe it was someone else's idea. A lot of us went to law school because we didn't have any other idea what to do. We just figured, let me continue on with my education because I don't know what I want to do. And that reason is a difficult reason to stay in the law if that was your reason to go to law school. But being a lawyer, let's talk a little bit about that because I want you to start to put your attention and your focus. If you're not putting your attention and focus on where you want to go, you're going in a place where you're moving towards uh, the unknown. And the, the fact is, a lot of us move towards the unknown because we don't understand how the physics of life work. And that's part of what I'm going to teach you in these videos. And if you choose to read my book or become part of the community of Esquire Academy, you will learn in depth how to direct your focus and your attention. But what are some of the things you like about your day-to-day -day world as a lawyer? And part of what I teach my consultants and I teach in Esquire Academy is do more of what you like. Figure out how you can delegate a lot of the stuff that you don't like or maybe you're not very good at, but start to look at what you like to do as a lawyer. Then stop doing some of the things that you don't like. If you have the opportunity 
and you have the control to do this, these are things that started to change my life as a lawyer because I was doing a lot of stuff that I hated. And I realized if I don't like what I'm doing, someone else could do it a whole lot better than me. But I didn't want to let go of the control of it. And that's part of the process is letting go of the control of needing to have a hand in everything. It takes us down. Trust me, it made me sick and with stress and illness and migraine headaches and all kinds of stuff because I didn't want to let go of the control of everything. But once I did, things started to shift in my world. So try to do more of what you like or even love. If there's some stuff in the law that you love, do more of it. It helps to drive your day-to-day -day actions. And when you go home at night, when you've done a lot more of what you love, you can't wait to get back to work. If you don't do what you love, you know what your days are like. I don't have to preach to the choir here, right? So let's take a look at what are your areas of practice. Do you like the areas of practice or area of practice that you are in? If you don't, start to talk to other attorneys to find out what it's like to be in other niche areas. Are you a transaction or litigator? I know a lot of people that do not like litigation because they got into it because it was the only job they could find out of law school or they just happened to do a litigation job and they're not suited for litigation and vice versa. It, it's on both ends of the spectrum. Now, I know litigators that absolutely love it. I did quite a bit of litigation and I found that I wasn't the kind uh, type of person to be a litigator and I found my way out of it after a while. Other attorneys are quite difficult to deal with and that's part of my mission in life is to help us to see why we're difficult as a profession and work towards the greater good of our clients, because that's really what it's all about. But there's so many areas you could choose to go into that you might want to look at. And lastly, in this little area of discussion, do you know business? Are you a business person? I don't care if you're a new associate or you're a partner. You need to have a book of business. You need to figure out how to be in business, how to be a marketer, how to bring in, how to be a rainmaker, how to bring in business how to really oversee your team in a way that's logical and functional and helps them grow as people too. And so I implore you to look at how you can be a better entrepreneur or a business person. And if you stick with me in these trainings, you're going to learn a lot more about that. So let me talk to you about getting started in terms of looking at what your life purpose may be. What do you love to read, think about, or do? What do you enjoy doing? And so when I talk to people over the years, and I've talked to lots of younger lawyers about their life purpose and stuff like that. And so let me tell you a story of, of a pathway of a young attorney who didn't realize that she could follow her passions out of the law. And there was opportunities for her maybe to, to keep her passion in the law. And so I'm, I'm in this resort that my wife takes me to for my birthday. And it's in the middle of a lake in Nicaragua. And it's these casitas, so you can't get away from the resort other than take a, a, a little boat out. But, but you're there, and you can and, uh, swim and blah, blah, blah. But you see these people that stay in these casitas because it's all-inclusive, and you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you see these people. We're talking to them, and there's this one younger girl, and I uh, found out she was an attorney. She's getting married. Her friend's taking her here to this resort right before her wedding. And I was talking to her about being a lawyer. And she says, I absolutely hate it. I absolutely hate it. So I started asking her these questions. What do you love in life? What do you read about? What's your passions? And she goes, I love, I love absolutely fashion, fashion design and stuff like that. And I said, well, why couldn't you be a fashion designer? First, I've got $250,000 worth of loans. And I'm like, oh, my. I said, that's difficult. But that doesn't mean you couldn't leave the law or find an area in the law that was dealing with fashion design. And so her friend pipes up in the conversation and says, well, you can't make any money at that. And I look at her, I said, that's what you believe. And one of the things is in these videos I'm going to teach you more about. And when you read the book, my book, Raising the Bar, you're going to learn more about how your beliefs create everything in your world. Everything that occurs in your life is a happenstance from what you believe about things. And if you want to learn more about that, get my book. I specifically want to open you up to that idea. And so when I said that to her, she looked sideways at me and shut up because she needed to. Because those were her beliefs. And I said, you can leave the law, young lady. You can do it. And if you plan it right, I said, go read some books on life purpose and understand. Because I was just uh, in the middle of writing my book, but understood life purpose well because I'd studied it and knew it and, and was looking at it in my own life in profound ways. But understanding that 
you can be in the law or out of the law and really make an amazing living if you choose to do so and if you shift your beliefs. And there's various ways to do that, which I'd like to teach you more about later. But if you want to learn more about life purpose, I have a whole section in my book, Raising the Bar, about it. I want to give you the first three chapters to check out. And I get on my soapbox in the first three chapters and talk about the law and the difficulties we have and where we are now and the possibilities for change. But I want you to take a look, take a look-see, as they say, and check it out and see if it's something that aligns with you and that you want to know more about. And you can take a look at the index and see what my chapters are about, what I'm going to teach you in that book. So I ask you, if you're interested, to go to raise the, raisingthebarbook.com backslash start and get your first three chapters and check it out. I'm thanking you from the bottom of my heart for joining me in these videos and this video today and stick with me. I've got a lot more I want to share with you uh, in these free videos and I've got a lot more I want to teach you in my book and other programs. So I appreciate you being here and I wish you the best day. Take care.